to continue calculating mass relationships. Um, again, step one, be sure the equation is balanced. Step two, convert. Grams to moles. And um, vice versa if need be. So just put it like that. And uh, for three, use coefficients for molar ratios. And uh, as an example, let's say we had how many grams of CO2 are formed from six grams of carbon and 40 grams of oxygen. And an equation was set up like this. Carbon plus O2 yields CO2. First thing, uh, check to, to see the equation's balance. Well, it is. One carbon on the left, two oxygens on the left. One carbon on the right, two oxygens on the right. So. After that, what we can do is set up a mass, molar mass, mole table. And this will organize all of the information regarding what's given to us and help us find what we need very easily. So the first thing that's given to us is that we have six grams of carbon. We know from the periodic table that carbon is 12 grams per mole. And if we divide mass, uh, or rather molar mass, in, into mass, we get the number of moles <coughs> to be 0 0.5. And uh, for mass of oxygen, 40 grams is given to us. We know from the periodic table that O2 is 32 grams per mole. So the number of moles we have is 1.25 mole. If we use mole equals mass over molar mass. And if we want to determine the number of grams of carbon dioxide, we're going to first have to set up, um, after we convert current to mole, our uh, coefficients, which are invisible. That means it's a 1, a 1 to 1 to 1 molar ratio. So we have 0.5 moles of carbon are actually creating 0 0.5 moles of CO2. And the reason that is is because carbon here is going to be our limiting reagent. Only one mole of carbon can react with one mole of O2, which means that 0 0.5 moles of carbon can only react with 0 0.5 moles of the uh, oxygen or O2. So this is actually an excess. And the reason why it's an excess is because we're only using 0 0.5 moles of these guys. The remaining 0.75 moles is just bouncing around and not partaking in the reaction. So we have extra oxygen there. 
However, the reaction is going to depend on the amount of limiting reagent we have. Uh, hence the name. It's going to limit exactly how much carbon dioxide we're forming, since it's a one-to-one -one molar ratio. If we start with 0.5 mole carbon, then we're going to have to have 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide. And since we know that the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44, then we can multiply 0.5 times 44 to get a mass of 22 grams carbon dioxide rather so <clears throat> just to backtrack we first converted um, we first saw that the equation was already balanced we converted grams to moles we then saw that carbon was our limiting reagent and that the oxygen was in excess therefore we have 0.5 moles of carbon reacting with 0.5 moles of oxygen to get 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide. Don't let that 1.25 confuse you. There's a, a about a 0.75 mole of extra oxygen that's not being used. So looking at the molar ratios, if we have 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide forming, looking at the periodic table, uh, 44 grams per mole, we can then say, okay, that means 22 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay. So, let's say we had something like 4 methane are made with two point one grams of carbon and zero point five grams of H two H two gas. Well, if this equation is given to us, carbon plus H2 gas yields the CH4 or methane gas. Well, step one, we first need to make sure the equation is balanced, which in this case it's not. So uh, if we have one carbon on the right, one carbon on the left, four hydrogens on the right, if we just put a coefficient of two in front of this hydrogen gas, it'll give us four hydrogens on the left. Okay. Now we just convert um, gram to mole, or mole to gram, depending on what's given to us. And since the mass is given to us, we put that in first. So we have 2.1 grams of carbon, and we know the molar mass of carbon is 12 grams per mole. So with that, since mole is mass over molar mass, mole equals 0 0.175. <coughs> For the mass of hydrogen, it's given to us as 0 0.5 grams. We know the molar mass of diatomic hydrogen is 2 grams per mole. So number mole is going to be 0.25 since moles mass over molar mass. So if from the ratios of the coefficients we then try to determine which one the limiting reagent is. Well, that's easy. One mole of carbon is going to react with two moles of hydrogen. So that means that if we have 0.25 moles of hydrogen gas, that's only going to react with 0 
one two five moles of carbon. Right. Since it's a one to two, so in this case, it's the hydrogen that's the, the limiting reagent. Since we actually have a bit more carbon than we're using in the reaction. Only 0.125 moles of carbon is going to react for the 1 to 2 molar ratio of carbon to hydrogen. And 0.125 moles of carbon is going to yield a 1 to 1 molar ratio, so 0 0.125 moles of methane is going to be formed. Now, since we know that the molar mass of methane is 16, all we do is multiply 0 0.125 times 16, and we get 2. So 2 grams of methane are formed. So here, in terms of limiting reagent, it was actually the opposite of uh, our previous reaction. But again, if you follow the order, first get your uh, balanced equation. So you can find out what the stoichiometry or the molar ratios are of your reactants and your products. Then from there, get your, um, uh, write down whatever's given for the mass. Use a periodic table to convert to moles, and then once you get your moles, uh, you're pretty much set as long as you can figure out which one the limiting reagent is, because one of these guys is going to determine how many moles of product you have. In this case, since the one to one was the carbon to methane, it was the 0.125 to 0.125. Those have to be the same, and from there. You get your mass, which is what they're asking for.